Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. What's going on? What's up, everybody? Hello. Hey, everybody. Hello, what's up? Another beautiful Monday, you know? Yeah, beautiful for a tornado season right now. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. How we doing? Good, how you doing? I'm well. Doing well. What's going on, everybody? Hey, Carlos, what's up? Hi. Hey. Hey, everyone. Happy Monday, what's happening? I, I, I got too much sauce. That's why it be dripping on. Oh. Like, for you guys, at what point did you decide to get your first warehouse? Like, you know, how much in sales were you doing per month? Like, when I start looking for my first warehouse, you know? Well, where are you operating your business out of now? I think it's less about your sales that you're hitting. Obviously, you need to support the cost of the warehouse. But, like, where are you operating the business out of now? My house. All right. And how complicated is that for you? It's kind of, yeah, it's a little complicated. I need more room, for sure. Yeah. So I mean, is it, and is it getting more complicated as the days go on? Absolutely. And I got yeah. a lot of on inventory. Like I'm ready to go all in to, you know, get a lot of product, but I don't have the space now. Honestly, like. Are you losing, potentially losing money by staying where you're at or losing out on money, losing out on opportunity? Which is like, time. Keep in mind, time is money. So you got to weigh time into that. Then, yeah, I mean, that's, that's definitely a factor for sure. Yeah. So um, it's, it sounds like you're there already, right? You know, I think you, you just answered the question yourself. And what most people fail to realize is the warehouse opportunity, right? Because once you get into the space, it frees up not only time, because now you're not moving boxes around, lugging them in and out the house, you know, but you also could open brand new wholesale accounts that only ship to commercial buildings. You could open brand new wholesale accounts that only ship to warehouses, you know, preferably a lot of them. Sometimes they even have elevated uh, bay door requirements. Some of them will do um, lift gate service fees, but also you're going to be able to pack that thing and turn a lot more inventory. So you got to look at it like, all right, yeah, maybe it's an extra $4,000 a month. But if my business doubles, which it definitely will, probably even 5x in that first space. You know, can those new revenue stream, can that new revenue stream support the warehouse? And the answer, 99.9% of the time is absolutely it can. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm just just trying to weigh like, you know, the business, what I got going, what I could potentially be doing, you know, so it's all figuring that all out, you know. What state, what state are you in again, right? I'm in Connecticut. Yeah, Connecticut. So fortunately, you're not. Listen, Connecticut's not not super cheap, like like say Wyoming, but you know it's also not like New York prices where you're paying twenty dollars, yeah. eighteen, yeah. seventeen uh, to twenty dollars a square foot. Are doing some research, man, and you know find a a realtor that you know is is really that knows leases and and stuff really really well, knows all the details that you need to know, and just start pricing it out and see where it fits in your budget. Yeah. Uh, well, one thing I want to mention too, I'm not sure this is not a stage, but at least in Dallas, uh, they have like, you know how you have like WeWork, for like office space, they have something similar for warehouses too, where you have like a big space um, and they have loading docks and they'll rent out, they'll partition it into like different smaller spaces for storage, right? So you have your own little subspace and they have different plans. You might start with 500 square feet. You know, you might pay X amount per month. And then like, you know, when you're ready to kind of scale up, you can go to like the 1,000 square feet plan and, and so on and so on. And you, as you grow, you know, it kind of goes with you. The only thing is that, of course, you might pay like a slight premium once you get to a certain size. But if you're just kind of like this starting out, that might be a sort of a good compromise where you can kind of get the loading dock, your own space. And you, you know what I mean? So where a warehouse is the move every Every single company that is either in East Ellers or I or in the inner circle, who we encourage them to get a warehouse, they get a warehouse, they instantly send me a message within the first three months, like, Eric, this was the best decision I've made because in the past three months, my business has doubled, you know? So not only have I been able to pay off the warehouse, but I'm making more money, you know? But I get it. There's a lot of fear involved with that, you know? And so something to consider is how long the lease is. You don't want to get a, a five-year lease in a, in a 1500 square foot warehouse because you're going to set yourself up for failure in the future when your business grows so 
You want to make sure that A, the company that you're getting the warehouse from has additional properties that you can break that lease and go to one of their other properties, or B, you're only committing to um, either month to month or six month or one year or even 24 months at the max for your first space because you're going to grow out of it rather quickly. I was going to say, I have a question about the warehouse too, because we actually were kind of at that crossroad, you know, recently too, whether we go the prep center route or the, the, our own warehouse, we're working with a prep center right now, but you know, as we get into wholesale, we want to kind of go with our own prep center for quality control and just, you know, to oversee everything a little bit more hands-on. But one of the main concerns for us is uh, like employees and things like that. Is there a certain type of insurance you need for employees? Is there a, like, uh, you know, we have VAs, but that's a lot different from employees in the States. And, you know, if they get hurt in your warehouse, things like that, you know, how do you deal with that? Or like, you know, do you need some sort of insurance or something like that for, for the people that are working for you? you need, you're going to need work. Workman's comp. Yeah. Right. Stuff like that. Yeah. Workman's comp. When, when, when you get, and when, correct me if I'm wrong, Sebastian, but when you integrate with any of these payment processors like ADP, or anybody's doing your payroll, they'll instantly set you up with the workman's comp, correct? Um, they can provide you with options, but your probably best role is kind of the same route that you go with Unishippers when you're looking at different brokers for trafficking your transport, transporting your products. The same route you'd want to go with insurance, whether it's for your warehouse or whether it's for your employees as far as workman's comp goes, and just have a broker kind of show you different packages. Typically, when you get warehouse for your supplies for the actual location, along with workman's comp, you can get a discount by purchasing it through one insurer. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That was just one of the the main things we were thinking about, you know, uh, or concerned about is the employees, not necessarily the warehouse costs, but just, you know, people showing up late and and this and that and, you know, the workman's comp insurance, all that type of stuff is a little bit um intimidating, I guess, but obviously something you got to do if you really want to get to that next level. So I appreciate that. How many employees do you guys have just out of curiosity? 50. Whew. That's crazy. Yeah. I think the insurance you were thinking of, the ADP may automatically enroll you in is unemployment insurance. Have you guys ever have you guys ever had to had someone try to file a claim against you? They get hurt in your warehouse, drop a box on their foot, you know, trip, something like that? Well, it's not against us. They're filing it and then it's gonna go, you know, if if they if nothing ever has happened where it was something that severe. Yeah. That's good. Just so everybody's aware here, right? Like Sebastian and I, seven or eight years ago, never managed an employee, you know, never had employees, never were in a leadership position. He was a waiter. I was a college student. We had absolutely zero experience. So I think the fear, Devin, that you kind of discuss is is an absolute valid fear. And it's okay to have that fear, you know, but not Moving forward because of the fears, doing you and your company and your family and your future family a huge disservice, right? Because it's those risks in life. And really, with the support of this community and the people you you meet in this community, there's no reason why any hurdle in your business, whether it's hiring new employees or workman's comp or whatever the case may be, there's no reason that you can't solve that problem or at least figure it out through the process of doing it yourself. I, I agree. And that's, I mean, that's why I'm here. So, so hopefully, yeah. you know, um, that can, you know, just being around this community can give me a little more clarity and confidence uh, yeah. to go ahead and do that. Great, great call. Another great call. Appreciate all of you. Yeah, absolutely. So if you got any questions, hit us in the Facebook group and uh, we'll see you all next week. Same time, same place. Hey, doll. All right. Have a good evening. Good night. See you at the top. Good night, everyone. Hey, Lit.